Yeah, so, um, so yeah, so my name is Shiva Bharaj. I'm the CEO and founder of Pitstop. Uh, what we really do is uh, focus on making the most trusted, transparent, and convenient way of performing automotive service today. So the story he's talking about is, I personally grew up in my father's service centers in Toronto from a very young age. And so what I noticed was that as soon as a vehicle left our physical location, there was absolutely no way to connect to that vehicle and understand why it's failing until the customer calls you and says, my car is stuck on the side of the road, or they try to reenact the noises that the car is making. And so that doesn't tell you much. And so what we realized was that by using connected technology, we're able to um, plug a device into a car. So many of you might have seen this type of device. It's called the onboard diagnostics uh, device. It plugs right into the port of your vehicle. And over Bluetooth, it connects to a mobile application that we've created, and we're gonna demo that for you guys uh, right now. Actually, Yeshi, my co-founder, is doing that. Um, and what we're able to do is take all combust combustion engine data, uh, apply learning algorithms on, on top of it to identify when certain failures on the vehicle are gonna occur before they happen, so in a predictive fashion. Um, right now, we sell this platform through automotive dealerships. Uh, so it's a free service that will come with your vehicle when you go purchase a car. Uh, and the way it works is that uh, you're able to book an appointment right back to the dealership based on, this in, on these insights. So it's about increasing retention for the dealership, but keeping peace of mind for the end consumer. So that's kind of what it's about. So I don't know if you want to go through yeah, sure. the demo. Yeah, okay. So <clears throat> I guess uh, you just go to App Store, download the application. So I'm just going to show you the technology. We're going to actually try uh, to add a car. We have a simulator on our desk. We actually sit right over there. Um, so let's see if it works. Okay, yeah, so... <clears throat> The way it works is you enter into the system, enter your mileage, it tries to connect over Bluetooth to your vehicle to pull the VIN number off the vehicle. Uh, it'll then de debug it, so okay, so it connected, so that's pretty cool. Um, so right now it's gonna go pull the VIN number from our simulator that's sitting over there. Um, you select a dealership, this is our staging application. We actually have 10 dealerships on the platform right now. Uh, we launched in February of this year. We're at about 1,200 connected vehicles. Um, yeah, so I think things are going pretty well. Um, so this is, uh, wh when you buy your brand new car, we actually get you to book your first service tentatively a few months in advance, so we send a reminder over time. Um, so yes, you can go through that. We also incentivize the user, so in this case, it's like a $20 uh, discount on your first service if you use Pitstop to book that appointment. So it's just ways to for the dealership to build a better relationship with the consumer. Yeah, set, uh, setting up the time of service for that booking is going to enter in salesperson's name. We also give the sales in, uh, salesperson at the dealership an incentive every time they connect someone. So just ways to get them more engaged uh, with the platform. So what? Yes. Yeah, so that's the dashboard. So no problems. You just added the car. Um, you can message the dealership, call them, directions, request service is the big button. What Yeshin is going to do now is go to scan car, um, and then scan his vehicle. Put I guess put it to eight thousand. So show you some ideas of, like this is all kind of set up. So what we do is uh, we detect recalls directly from the manufacturer. So we'll tell you all recalls that are pending uh, based on your VIN number. Any services do outstanding based on mileage. And then we read all your engine data to tell you all engine failures that will occur. Um, and so that's kind of how that works. And so, yeah, so right now it's just loading. <laughs> um, but, but the idea after is, uh, yes, I'll show you how to request service. We also show a history log of your services performed at the dealership. So every time you go to this dealership, whatever is recorded in their system will be automatically logged on, on the application. Seven issues popped up, a bunch of engine codes. Uh, this is from our simulator. We just programmed it uh, to give you guys the idea. But so when you have something serious like a cylinder misfire, it will pop up the severity of it. And then you're able to book an appointment based on these issues. So. And in real time, they'll send an email back to the dealership, and so they'll book you in and schedule you in for service, and they can actually see the sensor data on your vehicle, so they can help diagnose it beforehand, order parts, and be better uh, assign the right technicians to your vehicle before you even come in. It's all about speed and efficiency. The way we see our business is not really hardware dependent, so we don't manufacture these devices. We work with hardware providers. We're very focused on our back-end suggestion algorithm system that's able to take in this data and tell you things accurately on service. So our goal is really to be able to take our back-end API and have it plug into as many service providers as possible. So in the case of insurance, it's about how can you take 
um, mechanical data or maintenance related data and understand how risky the vehicle is, right? So how do you add to the system that exists today? So that's kind of like the approach we're taking over time. So our, but our focus is on our dealerships market right now as we continue to build out our technology and then we'll scale out after that. Um, so th this is something like the dealership will see. Uh, it's like the service request. So all the customer information, the issues and alerts uh, related to the car. Um, and then at the bottom, you can view, view the vehicle diagnostics. So maybe Yashin will show you that on the dashboard. Um, so I think, yeah, so, so this is an example of sensor data coming in in real time. On the side, we have like a quick log that's showing some of the algorithms we're running. It's able to identify when an anomaly occurs. Uh, the way that works is as, you, as you're driving on the road, we collect this real-time sensor data. We look for patterns in that data. And when you go to the dealership or get something fixed, we're able to see, like, for example, a fuel pump failed. And so we label the data against that failure. And so now we have a, a database full of records of like 10,000 Ford Focuses with that fuel pump failure. And so we can drive an insight to the end user with over 85% accuracy uh, on anything powertrain uh, as well as emission control system related data. Yeah, and then, and then we have a dashboard that the dealerships look at once in a while. They send promotions through it. So now, I mean, winter's coming. And then, yeah. How easy is it to work with the car manufacturers? So um, a lot of them all back a lot of data and privacy and things like that. Yeah, so I, I guess we all know, like, the next five years, everyone's talking about this autonomous car. I don't know if you've heard about it. But uh, the, 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 the core to that is that the vehicle has to be connected to the internet. And the reason is um, to leverage pulling back all that data to refine the learning algorithms so that they can push it back to the vehicle and make sure that it's becoming safer and safer over time. And so with that is a pipeline, it's an infrastructure that they're building on this connected car. And so the analogy I use is, uh, remember PCs before the internet, you just use maybe Microsoft Word and Excel. But as soon as you connect all these nodes in the network to, to this infrastructure, you now have the ability to provide services like Facebook and Google. And so with the connected car world, it's all about once all these nodes that are driving around are connected, the manufacturers understand that there's gonna be a number of services that are gonna provide value to users. And they know that, they know for, for a fact that they're not gonna be the ones that control every single service because that would be, that would be fo foolish for them to believe that. So it's really, they're trying to build a pipeline of services like ours that can sit on top of frameworks that they're building, but making sure it's secure because obviously that's important um, as well as super safe. So. It's all about that. We did actually, um, about a year ago, receive an investment from uh, uh, Ford, Fontenelle's partners, and Verizon. Uh, we closed a seed round recently uh, over the summer, and so we're just uh, focusing on growth. Yeah. So, but the manufacturers don't even know what's going on themselves. Like the future is like very unclear to them. They're not traditionally used to building software or innovating at this pace. They're very used to uh, minimizing costs when they're building stuff. And so it's a very sh different shift in mindset on how you build technology. So, yeah. Can you tell everybody what Atlantis is? Pardon me? Can you tell everybody uh, which car Atlantis is? Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's the idea. Over time, I think that's where we're trying to get to. And so, yeah, becoming, I think the long-term plan is to become a, like a third-party brand that's able to validate vehicle data and make sure that the suppliers are building the most robust parts for the vehicle. And so speaking on behalf of uh, consumers and the people in terms of data validation. We're definitely pushing a uh, used car sales side. So like in our business model, we charge the dealership per vehicle and then we charge them a monthly service fee. And so right now it's easy for us to kind of bake that cost into like, so if you're buying a $30,000 car or even a $10,000 used car, um, it's easy enough for me to tell the dealership to invest like some amount of money on marketing through this platform. But what's difficult is on a $100 service, if I say add an additional $50 uh, to, to your customer, it's hard for them to justify that cost. So what we're trying to figure out is the best way to distribute this product uh, through the used car market. So that's what I'm trying to strategically figure out. But like data-wise, 100% we like. like. And the value is probably more prominent for a used car. So we have like, uh, I think we have about four core algorithms right now that are able to do like 85% plus accuracy on the powertrain. 
Um, so yeah, so we do have some algorithms, but it's only getting better as more and more data comes through. So yeah, but we definitely have some level of that technology for sure. Yeah, so like the only thing that's stored on the onboard computer is like a, a little buffer in, in RAM. And then every time you shut off the car for a certain period of time, it'll, it'll just clear itself. And then on every vehicle, the way they store it is different. So like capturing that data is, is not even possible. I mean, it, it, technic theoretically, it is possible. You can go into memory and get it. But it's, it's not feasible, I guess, on scale. And so that's the biggest problem, is that a lot of the data we're collecting, you would think exists, like an OEM would have access to it, but they don't because they haven't been storing data through the life cycle of the vehicle. They have snapshots. Like when you go in for an inspection, they have that snapshot data. So, so it's hard to build models against just snapshot data. So, so there's one interesting fact is that I don't know if you guys heard of Magna. They're like a really large tier one supplier. So companies like that actually supply the same parts to both Ford, GM, and Chrysler. So actually, when you look at the data for some of these vehicles, they're the exact same across different makes and models. So you can actually leverage cross-brand cross, uh, data to drive more insights as well. Yeah, I, I think that could make sense. The trick with that is that a big part of our data labeling process comes from having access to dealership's database. So what happens in that case is that I'm relying now on the user to either take a picture of their invoice or somehow get me access to that data. I mean, it's not, it's a great idea. I just, I've been thinking hard about how could you actually execute on that effectively. And so there's a lot of, uh, like these devices, like everyone has a device. You can find many, if you go, go on online, you can search like OBD devices. There's lots of providers. Um, I think it's less about that. It's, it's more about what is the best process to making things more efficient for the user and the, the whole channel. I think that's the key that I'm trying to solve. It's more about once you get the data, then what do you do? Okay.